Hello and welcome to the Leaders Room. Today I'm delighted to be interviewing Dr. Ali Sabah Almari, Executive President of the Dubai School of Government. Welcome, Dr. Ali. Hi. I have a few questions I'd love to ask you about leadership and governance as you are uh, approaching it at the Dubai School of Government. Mm -hmm. I'd actually like to start with the, the leaders themselves of the UAE mm -hmm. because Dubai or the UAE has been really blessed with some amazing leaders. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh Rashid, mm -hmm. uh, Sheikh Zayed, Sheikh Mohammed. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to hear just a few words from you on what their forms of genius were mm -hmm. that's made such an amazing difference to the UAE in really such a short time. So Sheikh Zayed, for example, what, what was his particular form of genius? I think Sheikh Zayed uh, is very genius in uh, how to engage the people in an uh, emotional uh, way so he can understand he he was in the, he can understand the, uh, the the culture of the United Arab Emirates and he can uh, talk with the people in very emotional way. So so most of the people get in love with Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan, and until now most of the people we can say all the people in United Arab Emirates and also in the Gulf get in love with Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan and yeah. And this one is the successful about Sheikh Zayed. So and what did he do? What did he do to make people fall in love with him? Uh, I think he was very honest. Uh -huh. uh, he was talking in very simple way to the to the people, and he's doing what's the right. Th he's doing the right thing for the people. Right. So that's was that's why the people believe in him. The people engage with him and follow him. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's so he's honest. He speaks well and he follows through. Yeah. How about Sheikh Mohammed? Uh, Sheikh Mohammed is very famous in about uh, uh, seeing the, the future for the Dubai and his vision about Dubai. And uh, he's very, uh, he, he can see beyond, beyond the borders and he can see out of the scope. Uh, so what might be an example of that? Many, uh, many, many of uh, Dubai projects, uh, there, there was a debate from the people around the world at the beginning of any project. And after that, the successful of the project, showing that Sheikh Mohammed has a, a great vision and he can see what the, the others not, uh, cannot see. So like uh, Palm, uh, Palm uh, Islands, when the project started, most of the people saying that it's very, very, uh, very, very strange things to do this project. And most of them saying that it cannot, cannot be a successful project. But after time, we release even even inside the Dubai and outside the Dubai, seeing that it's one of the most successful project in the world, the Palms Islands. And he, the, he started with the one Palm Island, and after that, end with the three, and with the World Islands. So these projects come uh, uh, come as a big project for Dubai, and the beneficial of these projects can see in many ways is uh, marketing the Dubai brand, uh, the Dubai image have change. Uh, uh, Dubai image have been changed and the very uh, many investor has uh, benefit from this project even the local people uh, have something very great we have something very great in the in Dubai we can visit the place we, there is many I think uh, this islands has many uh, hotels and very very uh, high high stars hotel like five stars hotels so I think uh, it's very nice to have it uh, yeah. in Dubai, very nice so project. So high risk, it didn't necessarily meet with a lot yeah, of at approval the beginning, at, at the beginning it was a very high risk project, yeah. but at the end it was a very successful project. Yeah. 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 And Sheikh Rashid? Sheikh Rashid is the same things of Sheikh Mohammed. He has started many projects and uh, uh, a successful project now, but at the, at the beginning it was a very uh, debate project and very uh, and a, a very uh, people think that it's uh, very uh, uh, it's not a good project like uh, a port of uh, Jabal Ali. At the beginning, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Rashid decided to build a port ou outside of Dubai, and uh, the people and the leaders in Dubai saying that it's a wrong decision and it will be uh, an empty port and it won't be successful because of the market at that time. What uh, year are we talking about? How long ago was this approximately? That's what I think that was in uh, the beginning of uh, 18. The 80s, the 1980s. Yeah, 18, 18s. Yeah. And uh, that was right at when the project has started. 
nine years after opening the, the port, the port was a failure. The, the port was almost empty. But after nine years, now he is one of the most uh, successful ports yeah. around the globe. Yeah. And he is the management of the, of the Jabal Ali port, managing uh, many ports around, around the I globe. I was going to say, now you're even exporting expertise around yeah. managing ports. Yeah, yeah managing right. ports. They are right. expertise and they are managing the port even in U.S. They are managing yeah. the port in, U in U.S. and uh, they are very successful in managing the ports. So this is one of the stories that's uh, giving that the uh, Sheikh Rashid was a good uh, in, his, in his vision. He but can also see. beloved, also beloved as Sheikh Zayed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, the practice that you're engaged in now as the executive president of the Dubai yeah. School of Government is to find the best practices um, in governance and leadership, mm -hmm. wherever they may be, yeah. uh, to collaborate with organizations and individuals outside of the UAE and the Arab mm -hmm. world and bring them into the Arab world. Um, how do you decide what is a best practice? How do you know that what you're bringing in, in fact, is going to be really good for mm -hmm. the Arab world? I think we have a system to indicate uh, as an indicator for the best practice and the best uh, practice and the best uh, the case studies in the public sector. Uh, this indicator is the uh, the the reward the the excellence reward uh, programs. We have the excellence programs running in Dubai. One is in Dubai and one in Abu Dhabi and one in the uh, federal level. These programs is standards on the AFQM program, so he can. Uh, the assistants are coming from outside of uh, United Arab Emirates and they can assist all the project and all the performance, all the initiatives of the public sector and they can benchmark them with the practice uh, uh, practice in the, in the globe and they can assist what's the success story and what is the not the right. success story. So I think the successful uh, coming from this part is uh, very indicator that is we are, we are very successful. So very the, analytical outcomes oriented, yeah. you know, bring us your ideas, but let's see how they work. Mm -hmm. But then how about translating them into the Arab cultures? Uh, are, are there any issues there? Are there any sort of Western best practices that may be great and get good outcomes there, but that would be harder to implement in the, an Arab society, which is different? I think there, there is many concepts coming from the West that is mm -hmm. very good to practice or to uh -huh. implement in, uh, in uh, in, in, in Middle East, like uh, as, as I mentioned, the EFQM model is the excellent model for European excellent model. This one is uh, you can you can bring this practice and but you have to customize it. You have to customize it in, in a way that it can be suitable for your culture for your need. Right. You have there is a lot of a lot of success stories, but you have to to get this experience, customize it, and uh, implement this uh, in a successful way. So just what are the key elements of customization? Is it because of how the government uh, might be different, or is it we have the local cultures different, or the relationship between, say, business and government? What are the, if you can think of an example, perhaps of. You have to think it in many ways, like mm -hmm. like the culture, like the government needs, like the uh, the political system. What you have, right. uh, there is many many ways you have to think about this practice and how you can implement it in a way that it will be suitable for you. So you have to think in many ways in many ways to, uh, to adjust or to enhance this practice to be suitable for you. Right, right. How about going in the other direction? Mm -hmm. Are there any practices that you feel that you've helped to shape or create, maybe through this customization process, that you think, hey, you know what, I think it should go back in the other direction. I mean, it's certainly true the West isn't perfect, right? Or any place that you're you know, seeking ideas from isn't perfect. Have you come across any ideas that you've developed that you think could go in the other direction? I think in our case, in United Arab Emirates, we have a lot of, we have many uh, success story, story in the public sector, especially yeah. in public sector. Uh, we are in a different, we are in a different position or in a different way. That's we are uh, the pub public sector performance in United Arab Emirates uh, better than the private sector, and this one is different than the other countries. Yeah. And there is, uh, we have a lot of success story. In, uh, and case studies can be very beneficial for the for the for the Western Western countries. So I think in the future we can document many of these uh, stories and many of this practice, and can export this practice to others. Can you give me an example? One springs to mind. Like like the the, the example like the Sheikh Mohammed uh, last month announced 
the initiatives that the smart governments. Uh -huh. Smart government is that all the transfer, uh, transferring the uh, public sector entities from the e-government to smart government. Smart government is all the service uh, from the public sector is on the phone, on the smartphone, on the oh. iPad, on the smartphone. This is and th that's uh, th that's is already started now, and it will, be, it will this initiative will be will be finished within two two years, and will be ready. So all and the how does it work? How do, what what exactly is the it doing? The application, the application of the public uh -huh. service on the phone. So you uh, the uh, the initiatives is to uh, to make the public sector available 24 hours, and uh, the the public and you can access to any service of the public sector by your phone, but with the, with the very uh, close point to you so access to the to the service and get the service through your phone and all the service from the public sector this is one of the best practice i've never have. heard of that anywhere so, yeah this is transferring from the e-government to the smart government i see yeah it's very uh, yeah, smart government that's very yeah. interesting and so that implies a lot of things you've got a call center there and and so that's, that's yeah. interesting that's interesting mm -hmm. the other example i'm thinking of and the name escapes me but there's um a sort of an, uh, an energy positive uh, city, yeah. right, in the UAE? Mm -hmm. uh, I forget the name of it. Energy positive? It's an energy positive city out in the desert um, that was built as an experiment to see how you could run a city actually while being either energy neutral or energy positive. This is in Abu Dhabi. In Abu Dhabi, yeah. Al Masdar. Yeah, that's Master, right. Al Masdar city. The, Al -Masdar I city. think this is the city which is. Uh, 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 which is uh, uh, green green city? We can Correct. say the green city. It's uh, most of the uh, energy is coming from uh, from the green environment. Right. Yeah. So this is the master solar city. And, and solar. And yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. And the transportation. And the sun. Also. So was that? Do you, um, was that? Are you familiar with that project enough to know? Was that mm, sort of? Not a, exactly. Yeah, I don't okay. have a lot of information about this project. Okay. Yeah. I just thought that might be one. Yeah. Okay. What do you think most needs to improve in the Arab world in terms of government and leadership? And I realize that's a very big question because it's a very mm -hmm. big and diverse world. Um, so maybe you want to speak more in generalities, but maybe you'd like to speak more particularly. Yeah. But uh, what what would you really like to see happen? So I think what we need is just to, for the government in the Middle East to understand the need of population and looking for the benefit of the population, as the United Arab Emirates do and the rest of the Gulf countries. The rest of Arabic countries need to focus on the population and the need of the population. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, I think, the main, fo main focus have to be for the governments. Okay. So Dr. Ali, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, mm -hmm. with all the work that you're going, that you've done and that you will continue to do, what do you hope to see the leadership um, looking like mm -hmm. in the UAE, both at the top of the government and business and, and throughout the society? Um, I think that's what uh, Sheikh Zayed done and what Sheikh Mohammed done is to, uh, to build a leadership style for United Arab Emirates. And this leadership style, I think I, uh, all, all the population in United Arab Emirates want this style to be continuous in the future. Any leader in the future has to follow the same style of uh, same leadership style of Sheikh Mohammed and Sheikh uh, Rashid and Sheikh uh, Zaid. This style is more focused on the population need and more focused on the uh, local uh, people and what they need and what they're beneficial for the for the country. So I think uh, the leaders of future has have to stay with this leadership style and continue with this leadership style. So this emotional form of leadership, caring Emotionals about the people, looking, letting them know, following yeah. through, having the vision as well. Having the vision, Where exactly. to take them so that they'll trust in that. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's right. a, uh, it sounds like that's what you're doing. <laughs> and it sounds it. like you're trying to spread it beyond mm -hmm. the UAE as well. It's mm -hmm. a very, very positive story. And I think if we can say something about the leadership style of Sheikh Mohammed, uh, we 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 realize that now that more most of the leadership in the public and private public sector in Dubai speak one language, so this is a difficult uh, difficult things to do to let to, to get all the people to speak one language, all the leaders to speak one language, to have one vision, so to 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 lead the people to for for the vision that they all all believe in this vision vision and all uh, speak about this vision 
is a very great job. So when so you when say speaking you, one language, you, you don't mean speaking in Arabic. What, you mean we all know what we're doing. Not, we're not, talking about it the same way. One language that's mean speaking in one direction. Yeah. In one direction and believe in one things and believe, speak about the vision and the, the vision is clear for all of uh, the leaders in Dubai, and they can if you make a, an interview with any leaders in Dubai will speak in the same uh, same manner or same language or same direction, yeah. because it's like a messaging. Uh, one message is delivered from the all the leadership in the uh, in the governments because of uh, Sheikh Mohammed is uh, taking. Uh, I have spent a lot of efforts to bring the people to speak in one direction. Okay. Okay. It's an accomplishment. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Ali, and thank you for joining us in the leaders' room. It's a wrap.